So, um, so hermeticism is um, a series of books that were ascribed to someone named Hermes Trismegistus, who apparently came down, who's also Thoth in Egypt and Hermes in Greece, and he came down and said a bunch of cool stuff. Now, it could have also just been a group of mystics that were playing with ideas, as mystics do. They get together, they talk about shit. This has been happening since like the Greek philosophers. Um, and there was something called pseudepigrapha, which is a, when you write something, you want it to be published, so you write it under a name that's going to be read, a popular name. It's the reverse of what people do today. It's like the reverse of plagiarism. So it could have just been that, but you know, the, the texts survived. They had their, they, the, uh, people were into them in the Renaissance, and they kind of came back a little bit in, in the past few hundred years. Um, but that's where we get those seven hermetic principles. That's where we get Kabbalion, and that's totally where we get the secret. I'm sorry, the secret is comes totally out of hermeticism. Not really though, because hermeticism just comes out of consciousness. So nobody owns this stuff. You know, you can't own reality. It's just consciousness. Chill. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like different versions of it. But um, so the idea here, and again, remember, this is, these are just ideas. You don't have to have them. Take what you want. The idea here is it's all in your mind. It's all in your head, but you don't know how big your head is. That was said by Lan Mala Duquette. Another principle of Hermeticism is as above, so below. So whatever's happening in this plane is a reflection of what's happening on the larger plane. Same design, different scale. Um, and that's a big thing you'll see in Hermetic Kabbalah, which is uh, naturally fractal. We have reflections of designs going downwards and complications of designs and multiplications of designs in a way. Um, <clears throat> but yeah.